let's start with the results of last week because like i said we had four tournaments last week and we know the results of a couple of them because we watched them live let's go check them out so let's start with the probably the most i don't know this is probably the best feel-good story of the week uh oj Aliasim breaking the drought breaking the uh, breaking the curse of his finals losing record finally getting his title and he did it in great fashion he destroyed city pass in that final and oj Aliasim is going to be very dangerous watch out the confident Aliasim is a dangerous Aliasim. Watch out for Felix. He won 6-4-6-2, lifting his first ever trophy. In the Dallas Open, only about 12 hours ago or less than that, Opelka defeated Brooksby in a couple of tie breaks. Surprise, surprise. Uh, of course, Opelka loves playing tie breaks. He won both of them against Brooksby. Uh, Brooksby, again, you know, uh, he's a very promising player, but just experience won the day. And the last tournament for the men this week was in Argentina. Of course, we know about Del Potro playing his last match being uh, in the Argentina Open, but Casper Ruud, he wins another clay court ATP 250. He is the king of the ATP 250 clay court events. Uh, he beat Schwartzman in the final. Very, very good win in three sets. 5-7, 6-2, 6-3, beating the hometown favorite and also one of the very good clay court players on tour. And the only tournament last week for the women was St. Petersburg, a WTA 500 event. And Contivate, the queen of the WTA 500s, the queen of the indoor hardcourts, 20 match win streak. She beats Sakari in a very close match, 5 7, 7 6, 7 5, down 5 2 in the final set, came back to win, won five games in a row to win that one, lift the trophy in St. Petersburg. She continues to be on fire in the last six months. Very dangerous player. She also got rewarded in the rankings, which we'll find out in a second. Career high ranking for her. Let's go have a look at the rankings, starting with the women's for last week and see the changes. Here are the women's rankings for last week. You can see there, Ash Barty on the overall rankings. She stays at number one. Sabalenka at number two, followed very closely behind by Barbara Krejcikova. Could be a change of the rankings because both of those players, uh, both of those, both of those players are playing this week. And uh, then you've got Pliskova, who's still out of action because of the injury. She's number four. You've got Badosa at number five, very close to Pliskova. So Badosa, if she gets a good week this week or next week, she could leapfrog into fourth spot. Uh, Contivate, she goes up three spots thanks to that win in St. Petersburg. She is at a career-high ranking, number six in the world. She overtakes uh, Sviontek, Sakari, and Muguruza, uh, pushing Muguruza down to number uh, number seven, uh, Sakari at number eight, and then Sviontek at number nine. And rounding out the top 10 for this week is Jabor at number 10. Let's go have a look at the race to the WTA finals, the Shenzhen finals at this stage. That's what they're gonna be, where it's gonna be played. Ash Barty, number one still, after winning the Australian Open. Danielle Collins, the finalist of Australia. She is at number two. Madison Keys, she's at number three. Sviontek at number four. Krejcikova at number five. But Contivate, 13 spots higher than last week. Rockets into the top eight at number six uh, with a very, very good win last week. Pushes down Bedosa to number seven. And Sakri making the final of St. Petersburg. She gets into the top 10 for the race of the finals at number eight, eight spots higher than last week. Pushing down Halep, who goes down to number nine. And Anissimova rounds out the top 10 for this week. So some big changes to the players that played well last week. Let's go have a look at the A to B rankings. So... No changes to the top 10 in the men, but there is some a little bit of a change to the race of the finals. We'll get to that in a second. Djokovic, he stays at number one for now, but that is in danger because he'll drop a lot of points in the next couple of weeks because of the Australian Open from last year. So we'll keep an eye on that one over the coming weeks. Medvedev, he stays at number two with Zverev at number three. Sidney passes it still at number four despite making the final of last week's um, Rotterdam Open. Uh, Nadal stays at number, number five. Berrettini at six. Rublev at seven. Casper Ruud is at number eight. Oje Aliasim almost catching Ruud at number nine. And uh, then you got Yannick Sinner rounding out the top 10. So they are the rankings at the moment for those guys. But, uh, you know, Felix and, and Ruud having, you know, winning titles last, last week are really, you know, they're really dangerous players to watch out for over the next few weeks. Let's go have a look at the race of the finals. And, you know, because of the Australian Open, the points, the players that won, uh, the players that played well at the Australian Open have been at the top of the tree still. You got Nadal at number one uh, with Medvedev at number two. But Ogelia Seam, with the 500 points that he gained in Rotterdam, he rockets up 
to number three uh, after, of course, having a great time at the Australian Open and winning the ATP Cup. Very good se season for Felix so far. Uh, he pushes Sidney Pass down to number four, even though Sidney Pass won, uh, you know, 300 points for being in the final of Rotterdam. He goes down to number four. Berrettini gets pushed down to number five. Chapo's at six. Monfils at seven. Rebis uh, Roberto Batista Agu at number eight. Zverev at nine. And Yannick Sinner rounding out the top 10 for the race of the finals as well. Is there any shocks for you? Are you shocked by anyone in the top uh, 10? Are you, I mean, probably a lot of you are shocked that Djokovic isn't there, but then again, yeah, if you know what's happened over the last couple of months, you're probably not shocked because he hasn't played and you can't win points if you don't play. But uh, it's it's going to be interesting. When Djokovic comes back, how will things be shaping up uh, over the next couple of weeks? And also, as I said, his number one spot is in jeopardy because Medvedev has a lot of points to gain in the next couple of months, whereas Djokovic is going to have to defend a lot of points. March is going to be a huge month.